in Trainiacs. The other day we played around with some sweet, sweet graphs, and I love me some pictures, that showed that in half Iron Man worlds, I had some of the fastest transitions in the race. Like in the run, even including the pros, I think I was top 100. I take pride in my transitions. So today we're gonna give, I don't know, I haven't decided yet, somewhere in between five and 10 of my best fast transition tips. I also tried out the Amio Power Breather Snorkel during the fancy montage swim sequence right at the end. You'll see what I think about it. Brief brag session here. If you didn't see this video that I did the other day, quick overview. Trophy-box.com put together this analysis of my race in the Half Ironman World Championships. You can see that in T1 of all the athletes, entire race including the pros, I was the top 7.7% overall. In T2, top 3% overall. Go down to my age category, the old division, and I was top 9.4% in T1, top 2.1% in T2. I like having a nice fast transition. Most races that I go into, this is the case. You all wanna know about how to have a fast transition, here's how to do it. All right, so over here, we've put together a bit of a makeshift. It's cold outside in Winnipeg, so let's transition inside a little setup. Before we get into the bike, one of the tips that I like to use that not a lot of other people do is take your bike nutrition, whatever you're going to take on the bike and shove it into your jersey underneath your wetsuit. If you're in a non wetsuit race, have electrical tape and tape it already opened up to the top tube of your bike. But most races are going to be wetsuit legal. So shove it in there and it's not like it's going to drag, it's not like it's going to get wet as long as it's sealed. That's gonna save you a ton of time. But let's get into the setup of the bike. So a lot of people will ask what the difference between road cycling shoes and tri shoes are. Well, tri shoes are designed specifically to slip into very, very easily. So you wanna get a pair of tri shoes if you've got the money for it because they open up like this and they just stay that way. You clip them into the pedals before the race starts. Tri shoes also have this loop at the back to help get your foot in and pull it up. You can use that loop to elastic the back of the shoe to the skewer on this side. And on the other side, you can just clip it to the top of your derailleur hanger, somewhere around there. What I also really like to do is because my feet are gonna be so soaked from the swim, I like to put a bunch of baby powder in the shoe so that there's less chafing and it dries out my feet really quickly and I don't have to worry about blisters. So you can take this setup, run through transition really quickly, hop on the bike, you're not worrying about your shoes, getting caught up and potentially dropping the bike, everything's nice and out of the way. Let's go into the helmet. So ideally you've got a helmet that has a full visor in it and that'll save you putting sunglasses on. Regardless of if it's a full visor or no visor, if you have to put on your race belt and most races are making you put on your race belt in transition one because it'll disintegrate under your wetsuit if you wear it in the swim. So you wanna have that open, ready to go. Very first thing you do, grab it, clip it in. Then once that's out of the way, you take your helmet and have it positioned towards you so that all you have to do is grab the straps and very quickly, you don't have to twist it, it's on and clipped in. And this happens regardless of whether you have a full visor like this or if you've got shades, you do the same thing. You have the shades positioned in such a way that you just grab them, put them on immediately. Same thing with the helmet. Everything is positioned so you don't have to twist it, you don't have to fumble it. Once that's on, the bike computer is exposed. Now if you've got a bike computer, set it up with all the screen settings that you wanna have before the race starts. 
have it on, everything set up, GPS paired, make sure that you've got full battery, which apparently this doesn't. The night before, clip it in and then start it up. Make sure that it's set up right before you go out to the swim. And then when you come in, as you're running out of transition with your helmet on, with the shoes not hitting the ground, just turn this on and everything's going to be set up and ready to go. Now we get into transition two, and this is what I take a lot of pride in. So a few things about transition two. Let's talk about the runners. You wanna have elastic laces, of course, and do small things like, you see how these are positioned with the toes away? This means that you can stand right in front of them and without having to twist or turn the shoes around, you can just grab them and slide them on immediately. Related to that, you want to Vaseline the inside of the shoes, like everywhere. People ask, what's the protocol for Vaselining your shoes? The protocol is, I used an entire tub of this for one race. Your foot is going to slide in really easily and it's not going to blister, allowing you to not have to put on socks in transition two. The final thing that you need to work on is this is where a ton of people lose gobs and gobs of time. They worry about setting up so many things in transition before they get out onto the run. If you really want to save time, basically just have a setup that all it takes is two handfuls to grab and then you go. So in my case, I set things up so I've got nutrition in one hand, shades and hat in the other, I grab it and I run. And I start putting this in my jersey or I take this right at the start as I'm running. So I'm not losing any time getting it all set up at my transition setup. I'm dealing with all of that as I'm making progression. I put on my shades, I put on my hat, as I'm gone. And that's it. Basically, you want to do as little as possible in transition and as much as possible in the first few minutes of the bike and the first few minutes of the run while you're doing it. Constant forward motion. So that is being fast in transition one and transition two. Think of it this way. Being fast in the transitions is not like you are losing a chance to catch your breath. It's like you are getting faster in the swim or the run without having to actually get faster in the swim or the run. If you cut a minute off of your transition time, that's a few seconds per 100 meters in the swim. If you cut a minute off your transition two time, that's a few seconds off your per kilometer time on the run. It's free speed. So there you go. If you aren't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button below. If you are subscribed, and you want to know more about the swim that I'm about to show you, go to triathlonterran.com forward slash training log, where every single week I give full details of all of these swim and run and bike workouts that I do throughout the week. Lots of details, a little more details on the MEO power breather. So here it is.